I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody. So when it comes to minimum system requirements for Windows these days, y'all know I've been pretty critical of those requirements for Windows 11. As I call them the Microsoft Elite Class minimum system requirements to run Windows 11. I feel that a lot of the requirements that are stated to run Windows 11 are just outright ridiculous. I mean, time and time again, I'm, I've shown videos here on this channel of Windows 11 running on computers that are well below those Elite Class minimum requirements. Which, those requirements, by the way, are H Gen or later Intel Core Series CPU, or Ryzen 2000 Series or later for AMD. Those are the two big ones. Um, but there's one particular requirement that currently is not listed as a requirement, but I believe should be a requirement to run Windows 11 or modern day Windows 10. A solid state drive. And that's because Windows 10, for example, I mean, I've shown it in videos on my channel. Windows 10, over the years, as newer system builds have came out, Windows 10 has increasingly gotten heavier and heavier and heavier. Especially on computers that use a hard disk drive as their boot drive. I mean, loading up the system, waiting on program to load is just flat out awful. Here's a good example. The community college I work at, they recently re-imaged their computers from Windows 10, I want to say LTSC 2016, or uh, it might have been 2019, I can't remember for sure. Um, an older LTSC built of Windows 10, and of course, many on, um, who are in Enterprise know that LTSC is a stripped down Windows 10. It only has the bare minimum stuff. So the community college went from Windows 10 LTSC to Windows 10 Enterprise 21H2. The computers that we have in our area primarily consist of HP Z240 workstations. I think they have 16 gigs of RAM, Intel i7 or Xeon CPUs. I mean, really high-end specs. They even got discrete NVIDIA graphics cards in them. But traditional SATA hard drives. Those things with Windows 10 21H2 are painfully slow. And when you have computers that are in a, in a domain environment, um, there's a lot that goes on from the process of logging in to the time you get to the desktop. And generally, the first sign-on just takes dang forever. So, that's one example. And again, I've shown them on my channel. Computers running Windows 10 1507 beautifully with a hard drive coming to a, to this, coming to a crawl with Windows 10 21H2. But, pop in the good old SSD and put Windows on that, the thing absolutely screams. And that's the thing is, modern day Windows, it's so resource intensive, there's so much to load up, you may as well have one of these bad boys in your computer. It's, it, it really should be a requirement. Um, maybe not a requirement that prevents you from installing the OS if it's not met, but a suggestion. Because hard drives, although they're great for um, data storage if you have a lot of stuff, um, hard drives are good for that. But SSDs, they really, they hands down, they really just win. And honestly, they should be a requirement for modern day Windows. Uh, they should be listed as a system requirement to run Windows. Because when you're on Windows 10 21H2 or Windows 11 on a hard disk drive, it's just horribly slow. So, the thing about SSDs is they've traditionally been known as something that's really expensive. And when solid state drives first came out, that was definitely the truth. 
these things were expensive. This solid state drive is from 2014. This 64 gigabyte Transcend SSD, not even a not even a top end brand. Uh, this plain old Transcend SSD 340. This cost over fifty dollars back in 2014. So close to a dollar per gigabyte. In 2015, it was typical to spend about a hundred to hundred ten dollars on a 240 gigabyte SSD. Again, say a two and a half inch SSD. Nowadays, in 2022, you can get a 240 gigabyte two and a half inch SATA SSD for around twenty dollars. Yeah, just twenty bucks. So we're not talking about a whole bunch of money. So I'm actually considering ordering up a bunch of SSDs when I go to refurbish the uh, stockpile of Optiplex 390s I have, because. With hard drives, it's, they're just painfully slow, and it's like, I don't want to sell a slow computer to somebody. Well, for one, most likely to get returned because customer would not be happy with a slow computer. But you drop the SSD in, the computer will absolutely fly. So, yeah, so the thing is, SSDs, they're getting much, much more affordable. Back in the day, in 2014, 2015, it was typical... Um, for me to do like a sort of a, a dual drive setup, I would have a smaller SSD set up as the boot drive, and I would have, let's say, a 500 gigabyte or a one terabyte hard drive also in the system to act as a data storage drive. Now, I still do this on occasion, but I mean, nowadays, even 512 gigabyte and one terabyte SSDs are definitely coming down in price. I mean, you can get them for less than a hundred dollars now. Um, now, of course, a one terabyte hard drive will be cheaper. Um, now, if you are someone like me who has a lot of files, I mean terabytes of data, of course, you're still going to, you still would benefit from doing the SSD and hard drive duo setup. But nowadays, it's, it's getting to where for just regular usage, you can get by with a 240 gig SSD or a 512 gig SSD just fine. Um, now it wasn't that long ago I shot a video being kind of critical of the OEM. OEMs like Dell and HP um, listing their computers with just SSDs um, with just 240 gigabytes of storage when you look back 10 years ago a similarly spec computer for that, I mean, for that era would typically have you 500 gigabyte, 750 gigabyte, one terabyte hard drive. So, less storage, but I mean, nowadays, I mean, for basic uses, I mean, a 240 gigabyte drive would be fine. Um, it just depends on what you're doing with the computer. I generally do like to suggest 512 gigabyte drives, but again, you get the idea. These things are getting much, much cheaper. So, of course, modern day computers that use the M.2 slot, you can, of course, use an NVMe drive for those. But for older computers that have just SATA interfaces, I mean, these are these are like a must have. Um, so, drop in install in a laptop, you can definitely squeeze a lot of performance out of an old laptop with one of these. Um, I, I posted a video not too long ago uh, running Windows 11 on a Dell Instrument 1525. Uh, the system has 4 gigs of RAM. A uh, Core 2 Duo, I think T9300 CPU, 2.5 gigahertz, and a 240 gig SSD. And of course, the thing absolutely screams. And this is a 2008 laptop, by the way, so not exactly anything near being new. Um, and for many years, I'd always would tell people um, the biggest way you can get um, added performance to your computer is to upgrade the RAM, which that's still true today. Um, you definitely want to have a decent amount of RAM in your system, but memory alone is no longer the biggest thing that can net you a huge performance increase. Going from a hard drive to a solid state drive really makes a huge difference. So, to wrap this up, the SSD, that is one thing that honestly guys, I do believe should be a stated requirement 
to install well not to install but to run Windows 10 or Windows 11 and have them run decently so I mean time and time again here lately I mean in you know, some of my test videos computers with hard drives running modern Windows just run so dang slow <laughs> so freaking slow whereas drop in an SSD load Windows on that and the thing was absolutely scream so anyways Solid State Drives go get you one so anyways hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching well everybody, that wraps up for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to Kukun channel, and be sure to tick the bell that way you get notified of new video posts. Also, I recommend following Kukun Company on Facebook. A link is in the video description. In addition to computer tech videos, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX. Links are available at the end of this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching and your support.